Creating a new human is awe-inspiring. From the moment of conception, complex and incredible things happen to guide your baby's development. From the first cell division, to the growth of brains, hearts, eyes, arms and legs, your body shapes this new person. Genes passed on from the mother and father provide instructions for the baby's development. But the environment inside the womb influences how the embryo develops too. So what happens during pregnancy? What a woman eats, stress, illness, treatments and the environment can influence the health of the baby and it can also affect the growth and long-term health of the child. Likewise, a baby's experience in the womb during and after birth can contribute to its development later in life. But there's still a lot we don't know. Understanding how events in pregnancy and birth can affect health is important and also informs the medical care doctors give to pregnant women to optimise the health of mother and baby. And this is where each one of us can help. By giving information to your doctor during pregnancy and after your baby is born, you can help with this important work. It means allowing access to your health records and also using information from routinely collected blood samples. Doing this helps scientists learn when and how to keep mother and baby healthy, which benefits us all. The Elixir study has been set up to achieve these things. Firstly, before we can answer such important questions, the Elixir team needs to collect and store blood samples from all mothers. They collect this at the first antenatal appointment, where an extra blood sample will be taken and saved to help answer questions about the mother's health. All babies have blood taken, but we need a different approach because the amount of blood available is less. All babies have a few drops of blood taken on a paper card, so we will ask to take up to four extra drops from the same sample on a separate card. Some babies, usually ones in neonatal intensive care units, have blood samples drawn as part of their clinical care. When the labs finish clinical work with the sample, there's usually a few drops of blood left over. These are normally just destroyed after testing, but scientists would ask permission to keep this leftover blood in the same bank as mothers. To look at the impact of the mother's health on the baby's health, scientists can use information that's routinely recorded during normal medical care and held in your health record from antenatal appointments. Studying this data helps answer lots of questions, such as how can we stop the baby being affected if the mother gets diabetes during pregnancy? How does being born too small or too soon affect the health of the baby? This is why researchers would like mothers to agree to having extra blood taken during routine sampling. And for babies, it's permission to keep and store the extra blood card and leftover blood from the intensive care unit. It's important to know that personal data is handled really carefully. It's all subject to the Data Protection Act and its use must be approved by research ethics committees. Plus, researchers have to get permission to use the data for each project. Each one of us who agrees to participate is contributing to scientific understanding and helping keep future mothers and babies as healthy as possible. <laughs>